Hello, hello to another Hi. episode of Wild Beyond the Witch Light by Misfit Tables. Uh, my name is Rob, uh, and I got a bunch of gamers here that like to play crazy folk in uh, this sort of crazy game that we've uh, established. Where? where? Yeah, where are these gamers? What? Go to your bathroom, <laughs> find a mirror, and look inside of it. <laughs> Just don't do that at the carnival itself, because that could be dangerous. As we've learned. Mm-hmm. Yeah, have you been to carnival bathrooms? <laughs> oh man i'm surprised they didn't put a carnival bathroom in this place somewhere as like the worst place to go like just if you <laughs> if your players go here to the porta bodies <laughs> no 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 <laughs> be like a red fair bathroom no <laughs> this place was banishment joyful what happened Uh, all right, so uh, where do we want to start? We just want to chat a little about like where we are. Uh, does anybody remember exactly yeah. the last few moments of the last game? Yes. <clears throat> so we had started off the game by um, finding the names for all of the unicorns on the carousel and then mm-hmm. getting some good gossip out of them about um, things that have happened in the past. And then... Um, deciding that we still needed to do something more to try and garner the crown of the Midnight Monarch. The Witch Light Monarch. Witch Light Monarch. Um, started a huge game of tag with all the kids. Yes. And then uh, the girl in the pig-faced mask joined in and tagged me, Sam, and ran off. And then we followed her around for a while. Uh, but uh, we're very unsuccessful at catching up to her. And I then think you've learned her name now too, haven't you? We did. Yes. Sow pig. Uh, Sow pig. Mm-hmm. And then um, as we left, she had gotten into one of the bubbles and was floating away. Yep. Over the carnival. Uh, and then I had yeah, tagged her had... with fairy fire. Yep. Floating away in a now fairy fire flaming uh, little bubble. Uh, which, fairy flyer, you know, you have a, a fairy flying fire e bubble. We got a fairy fire off on her before she <laughs> out of range. Mm-hmm. That's only gonna last about a minute, though. But you also know that the bubbles themselves only last about a minute, so she's gonna be landing right around the same time as uh, the spell is ending. But there might be a little bit of time to catch her. Uh, any thoughts on where we are right now, like uh, on what's happening? Uh, what, uh, what are your, what are your thoughts? What are your feelings right now? That's a good question. Well, we did learn before we saw Sow Pig a lot of lore, uh, about a ton of lore, just so much lore, which was great about uh, hither, thither, and yon, which are um, parts and realms of uh, various uh, from from Prismere. Uh, yep. A fairy realm mm-hmm. uh, that has connections uh, to uh, our mother, uh, who went. Yeah. We also uh, learned about the uh, hourglass coven and mm-hmm. the three witches that run it: uh, Bavlova Brightstraw, Skibatha Nightshade, and Endelin Moongrave. Yes, they each We're run those different realms the, within Brismir. Mm-hmm. Uh, and their minions. Uh, uh, Bavlova Brightstraw has the Evil Frog minion. Mm-hmm. Uh, Granny Nightshade has Sow Pig, who we are now hunting in hot Sweet. pursuit. Pig, 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 pig. Come um, on, Flash, we're in hot pursuit. Yeah. <laughs> um, Endelin Moongrave uh, is Glean's Shadow. Uh, that's that's her little nightmare pet. That- Do you remember what um, what the story was with Glean's Shadow? Uh, she uh, she's holed out in an old theater um, with a variety of undead and shadows, is what my note says. Mm-hmm. Uh, she stole Glean's shadow, who was someone we don't know. I actually have a note here that says, "Who's Glean?" Follow up. <laughs> um, and she was said to have been killed during an eclipse. Uh, uh, not to have been killed, will be killed. It yes. was oh, will be killed. 
she believes that there's a prophecy that she will die during an eclipse. Okay. Glad, uh, glad I caught that to add into my three <laughs> pages of Hourglass Coven notes. <laughs> otherwise, <laughs> otherwise, uh, otherwise the, uh, the realm of Jan would be much easier to kind of get through <laughs> if she's already dead. Right. <laughs> well, I don't know. She could be like <laughs> undead witch or something. She's got well, that's magical true. stuff. I don't that's know. True. It's a we good idea. Let me make some, some notes here real quick. <laughs> Tiny, whiny, <laughs> right some wobbly cool. stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> When the party gives the DM ammunition to screw them in the future. Oh, yes. <laughs> you give me all sorts of ammunition. It's great. It's great. Great. <laughs> oh, no. Those are the best moments, too, though. The things that come back, like, to either haunt you or, you know, uh, bring joy when, like, something kind of comes around. And I try my best to uh, to keep those things in mind. I make little notes. And uh, sometimes, sometimes things never happen because the nature of the game is it's you never know what the party's going to do. Yeah. Uh, I ran this game once where I'd set this guy up and like when the party was like second level, I was like a nemesis for uh, a fighter in the group and 20 or what, 19 levels later when they hit like 20th, they finally encountered this guy after like chasing him around the world. And he was sort of like a secondary character. He wasn't like the primary. Uh, they just pushed him through a prismatic wall and he was gone. Like round one. <laughs> oh man. Rather than have like this epic sword fight, it was like, Oof. And then he was just. But gone. that becomes super memorable, right? Oh yeah, I, I drew a little cartoon all about it, and we <laughs> razzed my friend that uh, that did it, <laughs> as he spent the whole time like, "I'm be- going to be the perfect swordsman. I will master this blade like no one else be- has has be- before me." And then he just bum rushes the guy and pushes him into a wall at the end. <laughs> oh man! I- In my Thursday night group, like I, everybody gave me backstories, and I built all these plot lines that sort of tied in and every time one of those was supposed to come to culmination either that person couldn't make it on that (laughs) night or like they had to leave the game so now i had i had to like restructure everything like all right we'll put that off for later and so far i've put most of everything off for later oh no that that happens a lot too that often happens (laughs) when we're running games with the kids (laughs) <laughs> uh, there was one last summer where I planned, we had a somewhat sensitive girl join the campaign and I planned an entire storyline around her character. Cause I wanted to make sure she had a really good time. Well, it turned out that the story featured zombies and that was too much for her. And so even the stuff that I put in that were like with these adorable spirits and things were not enough. And she ended up leaving the campaign and all the stuff I had, all the plot I had planned for her was just like, poof. Yeah. She's in my campaign right now, and uh, I'm not using your notes, but uh, she's, she's having a good time. <laughs> I'm glad she's A little back. spooked when there was a ghost. <laughs> but I was a, like, so <laughs> She's a delicate soul. It's a she's good thing a you're not using his notes. She'd probably be, like, traumatized. <laughs> <laughs> she's always so excited when game starts. She's <laughs> Yeah, that's a tricky thing with uh, with D and D too, and this has come up a lot in like the last few years with people where they talk about uh, you know safety rules in games uh, and like you know lines and veils and and finding the right balance uh, with your group because there's a lot of trust that uh, you know players put into a GM to tell a story that's not going to really traumatize them. Yeah. Uh, and with a group where you know everybody pretty well, you can usually feel that out pretty easily. But then if you've got like you know people that have come in new or you just don't know them as well. A lot of pitfalls. You never know what's going to set, like, you know, somebody off, what's going to be, like, just not something they're into. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's especially the case when we're running games for kids with story tables. Mm -hmm. Um, And, you know, we we had a big sit down about it. And we decided we didn't really want to provide trigger warnings because, basically, if it should belong on a trigger warning list, it should not even be in a game for 12-year-olds, you know? It's a a very wise... uh uh you know statement <laughs> if there's a trigger warning maybe we shouldn't be doing that yeah just don't <laughs> uh, and the last thing i want to do is give a bunch of kids like a list of all these awful things yeah um, although sometimes you need to just ask hey does anybody have any particular phobias that might not be you know uh, an issue for most people but are for you like for instance this game uh mm. i'm pretty sure that my wife would hate this game because um she doesn't like clowns oh, <laughs> oh very interesting Neither do I. 
but here I am at a carnival. <laughs> Ooh, interesting. I'll have to write a note down real quick. Doesn't that like well, it? Like it. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you give him ammunition? <laughs> that goes coming for you. <laughs> Look, we're talking about like the Feywild. Rob's like almost remiss in his duties if he doesn't ask us what our dreams and nightmares are. <laughs> yeah. That was that game where we you guys have already like uh, you know in the. Um, <laughs> it's interesting in in the uh what was it the the mystery mine when some of you went to the mystery mine and you were warned you know about that mm. place uh that that was traumatizing that and that particular yeah. ride is like designed to kind of mess with you and it's not easy to get through the whole thing uh <laughs> it's what a roller it's coaster <laughs> it is it's a roller coaster and i'm pretty sure that it's based off of some real sort of places you know like for instance um Universal Studios, they have like their tram ride, which is supposed to be, oh, it's all sorts of fun and games and whatnot. But if you have somebody that's like terrified of sharks, the silly shark thing is going to scare the crap out of them. Yeah. Um, or, or for like uh, my daughter, when she was really young, uh, she didn't know that like there's that one point where it, it I think the T-Rex comes down in the Jurassic Park one and just like <laughs> lands in front of the uh, mm. the tram and, uh, it, and the tram looks like it's going to fall off a cliff and all this stuff happens. They did a really good job of like making it feel realistic. And when we went back again after she had gone with her school and we're like let's go on the tram this is great i loved it when i was a kid and she's like nope <laughs> not going on the tram never again uh, oh man which is too bad so we went on by ourselves uh you know, and kids they can be sensitive mm-hmm. yeah if they get something in their head too then like you know it's goodbye yeah trying to convince them otherwise once they think something's been locked in right. uh but uh, speaking of these things, uh, and speaking of the mystery mind, it's, uh, it's interesting that we sort of wrap around to that. Uh, let me get back to that in a moment. Uh, but let's let's uh, start off this game. We've been kind of BSing for almost fifteen minutes now. <laughs> <laughs> I think maybe it's maybe it's time for people to enjoy uh, you know the story that we're here to tell. Um, so let's let's set the mood. You see the carnival uh, around you, people milling about, uh, going from event to, you know, to, to ride, to attraction. Uh, there are the witch light hands that are mingling. You see clowns kind of spinning around uh, the, uh, the different walkways, interacting with uh, all of the local visitors. Uh, it's, it's a bustling place. Uh, even late at night, it's, it's dark now. It's almost three in the morning and you still have... You know, the crowds are still here. This is night one of the carnival. This is probably the most popular night that there is because people wait for this the whole time and then they come. Sometimes they're too exhausted to make it to day two or day three. Uh, And uh, we find ourselves uh, kind of amongst the crowd. This is where I'm going to start. Uh, and you can hear in the distance, you know, all the, the, the sound of the crowds, people chatting, uh, the, uh, the occasional scream, which could be of delight or possibly even fear from some of these rides. Uh, and uh, in this crowd, we come upon a young girl with red hair uh, dashing amongst the people, uh, the other car- carnival goers. Um, and she's calling out, Mama, Mama. She makes her way through the crowd. She's pushing people aside. She's very small and is easily lost amongst the crowd. We can see that there's tears kind of starting to well up in her eyes. And it's obvious that she's, she's lost. She's been lost in the carnival. This, this happens to kids kind of all the time. They wander off. They lose, you know, the hand of their parent. They take a turn. They get places that adults can't get to. Uh, And uh, this little girl apparently has done that Uh, running through the crowd, calling out for her mother. Uh, She ends up, uh, running through uh, this one part of the crowd near the big top. Uh, and suddenly in her path is a tall elf uh, wearing dark, like a dark tunic. Uh, and on her face is this golden mask that looks like a sun. She's smiling with this beautiful smile. Uh, and the child kind of skids to a stop. And this this tall elf slowly kind of bends down and says, little girl, are you lost? And the little girl just nods, kind of like tears are kind of coming out of her eyes. Uh, and this uh, this tall elf glances over to another elf that's nearby, kind of leaning against uh, a tree just outside of the big top. This elf, very similar, almost, in fact, you could say they're identical to each other. Two, two women, uh, kind of their age is hard to tell because they're both wearing masks. The second one is wearing a silver mask, though, in the shape of a crescent moon around her face. 
Uh, and she says, don't worry, little girl, we'll, we'll find her. We'll find your mother. And the little girl just kind of nods and kind of looks at both of them. And uh, the, uh, the elf at the tent moves to join the other one and, and the girl. And she does. She doesn't just walk over. She ends up sort of doing like this very graceful cartwheel and ending up at the side of this other elf. Uh, they both reach out their hands. The girl takes them and they begin skipping off uh, through the crowds. The girl seemingly uh, calmed by their presence. Um, and they make the way through uh, the crowds pretty easily. They've done this their whole lives, apparently, these elves, and they're very graceful. Occasionally lifting the girl up into the air. She swings through, you know, people or over fences. Uh, and it's, it's not too long before uh, this trio comes to an area of the carnival where uh, outside this one tent, right next to uh, a booth that has this sort of mannequin uh, of another female with dark hair inside of it, uh, is a uh, is a woman dressed in very fine clothes, like the kind of clothes that perhaps like a noble woman would wear. Uh, and she's standing there with a man whose back is to this girl and these two elves as they arrive. Uh, the woman looks over the shoulder of this man uh, at the girl uh, and she's got this this sort of look of like intense look of like a little bit of worry, but also kind of surprise. Uh, and she calls out to the girl, Morgana, Morgana, come here, quick. What happened to your father? Why are you on your own? And as she's speaking, this man that was with uh, Morgana's mother quickly steps to the side and enters into this tent and vanishes. We never get a good look at him. We don't know, even know much about him. Uh, and we end with these two elves depositing this young Morgana into the company of her mother at the carnival sometime in the far past. We're going to pull out of that scene and come back to the carnival with other children running around, uh, some of them laughing, some of them crying uh, in this game of tag. And uh, anytime, anybody that's ever played a game of tag with kids knows that there's some that are really good at it and some that are not and just never seem to tag anybody. Uh, and uh, amongst this, this crowd of kids, we find this giant standing, and that's Thorn. And he's one of the people that began this game, but is now sort of stopped and is uh, looking up into the sky at this bubble that is uh, emanating these little purplish flames as it floats off over the carnival. With him are Sam, Sylphira, and uh, in the distance, Tana, also looks up and sees this bubble and the figure inside. What do you guys do? Oh, I'm running straight at the bubble, trying to right. judge where it's going to come down. You run straight at the bubble. You find yourself almost crashing into a fence that separates part of the, uh, the carnival uh, attractions. It's going uh, south from the bubble pot teapot, but south of that area is like the you're in sort of the lower part of this uh, hourglass eight figure that the carnival uh, is laid out in. And the bubble pot teapot is in that Southern sort of like the inner eight. Uh, but there are fences that, that sort of separate it from like, for instance, the, the, the pixie kingdom, which is right nearby. This ends up going sort of over the fence and over the pixie kingdom. And you can hear inside the bubble, this girl, this, this strange girl, sow pig, still laughing in that raspy voice. Doesn't seem to be bothered too much about the fire. Uh, in fact, seems almost delighted by it. This, <laughs> Come and get me. Come and get me. I'm working on it. Which... I'm going to chase after them, too. Yeah, right. me too. Uh, which fence did you say they were going over? Uh, so Sam is, he basically almost crashes into a fence that separates like one uh, event in the carnival from another. If you jump over into the other one, you're going to be like running through uh, the Pixie Kingdom, which has a bunch of people that are like, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> and you might get in trouble for running through it without, pit, you know, pump, like punching your ticket first. That is a uh, ticket required event. Hey, Sam, if you go into the Pixie Kingdom, don't they give you wings and then you can fly? Uh, I think you have to join the game first, uh, but I've got a ticket. I can get in. You guys go around. We'll do one of those grabby moves. Well, I'm just thinking, go get her. Get some wings and just go get her. You're all right. <laughs> <laughs> Sam, you uh, you hop the fence kind of skirting through uh, this, this sort of inner area of the carnival that is sort of meant to be off limits 
to normal carnival goers. Uh, are you trying to slip through unnoticed or are you just running for it? I am running. All right. And what about everybody else? Is everybody else taking a long way around? Uh, Tana is also in the distance and you see, I think Tana at this point, as, as you're moving closer, you see Thorne's head, you know, kind of oh, finally. <laughs> head and shoulders above everyone else. <laughs> I was gonna say, Before didn't I you take off, fail Sam. last time? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Kelly. I think I critically failed chasing after you people, so I'm like, you did. You got lost, but like there was a bit of time between when you got lost and when they caught up. You basically lost uh, Sal Pig. You lost sight of her, but you also lost the other crew because you, you went like the wrong way behind the tent. Um, but uh, but you have, you're now catching up. You're just you're not too far away, but you're going to be a little bit behind. Them. All right. Uh, what was that for, uh, Sophia? Sam, before you go, I touch your shoulder. Be safe. Take some guidance. Yeah, it's me. <laughs> exactly. Good old safe Samaran. That's not <laughs> what they call him. <laughs> How's the game of tag going? Is it flagging without us there to keep prodding it onward, or is it still going? At the moment, strong? it's at the moment it's still going strong. In fact, one kid runs up and tags Thor, and then laughs and runs off. I mean, you are not. Uh, do you want to continue to participate? It's up to you. Kinda. <laughs> 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 um, what do you guys think? Do you want should Should I come help chase Sow Pig, or should I keep the try to keep the game going? This is a role playing game question for your character Thorn. Yeah, I don't think that so. <laughs> Well, it's almost like Thorn stands there for a moment, looks around to see what the rest of the group is doing. <laughs> Meanwhile, Sam is like disappearing over a fence, like, you know, amongst these wagons and, and tents, uh, you know, breaking the rules in a way. Uh, what is Sylphira doing? Is Sylphira standing around waiting to, to have a discussion with Thorn? Um, so if I'm looking at this map correctly, Sam is going from the bubble pot teapot area over the fence through the Pixie Kingdom. Uh, yes, although there right? is a little area to the side that's not necessarily like he can he can skirt the Pixie Kingdom. If you look, there is sort of like a secondary uh, little like garden area. Uh, that's that's probably a little bit like the the feasting area to the north, but this is more like a little picnic area. Yeah, it's not very well occupied. Um, okay. The Pixie Kingdom is to the left. I'm going to try to follow Sam, and I'm going to try to take the path of. Not least resistance, but like peace. Like I don't want to try like crash through anybody, mm -hmm. um, but I do want to try to keep my eyes on Sam. Uh, and before I take off, I'm just going to go Thorn, Thorn. We have to go. And then I'm just going to. Okay, I, I found a compromise. I'm going to go with Sulfira oh, through the main paths, right? Not breaking down any fences through through the main mm -hmm. pathway. But as I'm going. Along the way, I periodically, like, I, I'm running, and I periodically <laughs> tag someone and just be like, you're it. I'm spreading the game. <laughs> you're it. All right. You're it. Uh, let's uh, let's get a, uh, an athletics or, or acrobatics check, whichever is better, uh, for all three of you. And Tana, are you chasing after as well at this point, or are you doing oh, something yeah. different? All right, no, so all I of you. I never let Samarand out of my sight. Uh, after he disappeared last time. Like, Although he's Thorne. now currently out of your sight again. All you can no. see is like Thorn and like Sylphira. Mistakes were made. Mistakes yeah, no, she's looking made. very determined to find <laughs> Are you going to rage chase? Just be like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> Throwing kids out of the way. There's like, there's like a, a group of kids are just like flying like behind you as Tana's like barreling her way through the carnival. All right, so what did we get for these checks? Let's start with Sam first. Nine. Nine. <laughs> All right, so <laughs> almost immediately, Sam runs, leaps over this fence, catches his foot. You just see him like disappear over the fence, and you hear like a <laughs> and like some some leaves kind of go flying up. And a moment later, he pops back up and is and is off and running again. I'm all right. <laughs> uh, what about Sulfira? I got a seventeen with no 17. bonuses. <laughs> seventeen. You run through the crowd uh, very uh, very deftly. Seems like they're just. Uh, you know, people are either through luck or some sort of natural grace. Uh, you end up uh, making your way through the crowd very quickly. What about Thorn? I got a 12. 
a 12. Still not too bad. Not as bad as, as Sam. Uh, you're able to make your way through, but this like tagging people is slowing you down a little bit. Sophia is probably about 20 feet or so ahead. And uh, last but not least, Tana. So I don't know if those kids are getting my way or not, uh, but I got a nine. <laughs> a nine. They are a little bit. So like you're, <laughs> you're trying to catch up. You don't see Sam. And now Thorne is like making distance on you. And Sophia is just out of sight. So to all of your best intentions, everything is going very wrong. Spinningly. It's starting to feel like Spinningly. eight years ago. <laughs> Not again. Every person I run past, I'm going to say, excuse me, I'm sorry. <laughs> excuse me. Bobby, Even if Bobby, they're Bobby, like two or three feet away, was that your foot on I'm going to say, excuse me, I'm sorry. All right. Uh, with this in mind, uh, Sam, you're still ahead of Sylphir and Thorne, even with that trip at the beginning, because you're just cutting corners. Uh, let me see if anybody gives you grief. Uh, nobody does. In fact, you end up just through luck, uh, running through an area. It, you're, you're sort of a little bit, you know, off the uh, the regulated, uh, you know, paths of the carnival, but none of the Witchlight hands are at least close enough, nor do they say anything when you run by. Maybe they just kind of glance uh, at you, but that's about it. Uh, you end up kind of running out this arch uh, and finding yourself in the southern part of the carnival uh, across the way from the mystery mine to the entrance to the mystery mine. Yeah. And you see above you uh, this flaming bubble that has sow pig in it. And she's running, you know, it's like that little doing that little hamster thing where she's pushing with her hands and running with her feet. And the ball is spinning and kind of flames are kind of coming off of it. Uh, and she's headed right for the mystery mine. Ooh. She ends up kind of going like right over the little pass. Uh, like the, the the pass area where this dwarf that's dressed as a, a magician is taking tickets. You see him kind of glance up uh, for a moment and almost like, you know, say something. And then he just glances down and pretends like he doesn't see it. By the way, I'm just, I can throw the map onto the Twitch channel if people want to see it. <coughs> that's, uh, if you, you want to do that now, we can. Real quick. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's huge. <laughs> <laughs> that wow, is yeah. what she said. The fun in the Feywild, all for the fun. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if this is helping. Here, let me get rid of it. Let me not show it while I try to get it to the right size. Did you just break? Yeah. You just broke Twitch? <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. We're hemorrhaging. We're hemorrhaging. They're all leaving. <laughs> <laughs> like maps. We want to see maps. <laughs> All right, so this is this is what we're dealing with. So here's the bubble pot. You can see the bubble pot teapot in the middle. So mm -hmm. we went through the pixie kingdom, and then we circled around, and she's going into the mystery mine right at the very bottom. Yeah, the uh, like you see, you can see it's kind of uh, oriented like an eight. Um, figure eight. Yeah, figure eight. All right. All right. Uh, going again, Sam, no, you not. are. Uh, you're, you're not too far behind, but you are on the other side of the entrance to the mystery mine. And you see her kind of like flying over. People are kind of looking up. And you see that she's kind of lowering herself towards one of these carts. Pardon me. Excuse me. Golden ticket. I have to <laughs> get through. I need to catch up with them. My friend. Roll a persuasion check as you're trying to burst your way to the front of the line. <laughs> I'm retiring this dice. That is a seven. <laughs> no! So uh, the um, the dwarf, uh, the dwarf who's dressed as the wizard, looks at you. He's like, "Oh no, no, hey, hey, you, no, 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 cutting, no cutting." And a few other people in the line are like, "Hey, that's not fair. You can't just run to the front." Sorry, and it's they're very holding you back for that now. person because she knows a lot about my missing mum. What person? There's no person you're catching. The ball of fire you just saw flying over. What ball of fire? And a couple of people around you are kind of looking like that one over there. And they're all pointing, and the dwarf is just like playing dumb. He kind of looks off one direction, and like the ball's over here. All right, all right, all right, fine. Just like tickets, here. everyone. Tickets. Let's go. Choppy chop. Picky pick. <laughs> Pointy point. All right. Uh, meanwhile, Safira, you are catching up uh, at this point. You're running around the side of uh, the uh, the carnival. This this sort of uh, southeastern side. Um, uh, of this this path and you see ahead of you uh sam standing in line trying to force people to more quickly punch their tickets to get on the mystery mine 
Uh, is there? I don't know. Lawful good. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> It doesn't oh, come I forgot naturally I had, to you, does it? I guess I didn't know. No! No, it doesn't. No, it does not. <laughs> the chaotic part does. The good part, eh. <laughs> But lawful. Mm. Um, okay, how long is the line? Uh, it's, it's not too long. This is mostly just uh, a matter of uh, convincing them to, to get you in first. Uh, and if you recall, the, uh, the mystery mine, like they, they set... Uh, the the carnival goers they they put them in these carts in a group of up to six so you see that there's like a few carts lined up some of them are already filling up but there's room for the others they're just not letting Sam cut the line to choose which cart he wants to go to is sow pig floating like down to the mouth of the mine or is she gonna like land somewhere on the the, the ground above the mine she actually descends and uh, the bubble pops like right. She hovers for a moment above one of these carts uh, and then the bubble pops and she drops down into the cart with like a thud next to a couple of other carnival goers who look at her with surprise. And she just kind of smiles with this creepy, like rotting teeth and stuff. And they're like, ah. Ew. Is that cart full? Uh, there are three spots left in that cart. Okay. Um, I'm going to go straight to the front of the line and I'm going to talk to this dwarf and I'm going to say, please, I'm sorry. One of our, someone very important to us is on this ride right now. And my friend and I need to join her on the ride, please, please. He, uh, he looks at you and for a moment that, that, uh, wizardly facade kind of shakes a little bit as he sees, he can hear like the sincerity in your voice. Give me a persuasion check. Uh, and, uh, roll it with advantage because Sam is also doing his best, but is just a little bit too panicked. No, I rolled an eight and then a seven, but it's a plus five. So 13, 13 is enough. Uh, to convince this guy. And uh, for a moment, he gets a bit of a, a serious look. He looks at the two of you uh, and uh, he, he nods and says, all right, uh, since, since it's your, your friend, uh, uh, you know, friends and family stay together, he says to the rest of the crowd and says, all right, go through, go through, yes, uh, to the mystery mind uh, to find Thank out you. what is within your minds. And I go, Thank thanks. Or, um, um, sorry, what was your name again? Uh, his name, that's a good question. I can't remember off the top of my head. Give me a second. Magic Mike the Dwarf. No, it's not Magic Mike the Dwarf. <laughs> Actual <laughs> Magical Mike. Uh, Wrong campaign, guys. Actually Magical Mike. <laughs> it's ma Magic Gimli? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> uh, hold on one second. He does have a name, but he uh, I think he does. Okay, here we go. Uh, to do. He says, uh, uh, you can call me Zefixo. Zefixo the Amazing. The Mentalist Zefixo the Amazing. All right, Mr. Amazing. Thank you so much. Good to see you. We'll be off. Uh, well, you won't be thanking me later. As he turns back to the rest of the, uh, the Carnival Goers. Thorn, you're arriving at this point. Uh, and Tana, you are a bit behind Thorn. Uh, what does Thorn do? Thorn, you can see Sophia and Sam have cut the line and are about to uh, enter into the mystery mine. Um, I think what Thorn does is notice a really tiny child standing alone, the littlest yet, and kneel down right in front of them, re as small as I can get myself, with a friendly smile, and then just poke her and say, you're it, and run very slowly away from her. All right, roll. Uh, give me uh, just a persuasion check or performance if you uh, I thought it was going to be a strength check. <laughs> he falls <laughs> over, and starts crying. 20. All right, you begin the game anew in the southern part of the carnival as you start lumbering away, and she laughs and gives chase. Tana, you go charging through. Uh, Thorn <laughs> passes you in the other direction with a tiny child in pursuit. <laughs> Can I glance around before we go inside and see either of them? 
<laughs> you look back and you see Thorn going in the wrong direction, and then Tana, you know, emerge from the crowd. I just, oh, Thorn, let me <laughs> safe. Look, there's only Tana, one... and I'll talk to the wizard. I'll be like, she's part of our family too. Can she join us? He's like, yes, yes, yes. go, go, go. Thank you. Come on, Tana. We have to go. Okay. All right. You make your way into the, the mystery mine and you head over to this cart where Sow Pig is sitting like in the front seat, kind of bouncing up and down with her hands like on the, the, ra- the railing in front, just like giddy to like go on this ride. And she smiles at your group as you approach. Question. How mm-hmm. are the seats laid out? Is it two, two, two? Is it two, two, three two. and three? Two two, 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 two. Okay. Well, I'm going to quickly plop of a squat right next to her. Okay. If anyone has objections and wants to sit next to her, I was going to. No, go right ahead. <laughs> if if getting, there's getting, a seat getting. behind her, I want that one. <laughs> uh, there is. There's a seat behind Yeah, because like uh, when she sits down, there was a person that was sitting like in the front seat or getting in that way, and they just kind of go, uh, and they step out <laughs> and like move to the back of the cart. Uh, I think I'll the, take uh, the next one. Yeah, so the middle seats and the front seat are open. And there's like this this couple, like this local couple that are sitting in the back looking a little disturbed and uncertain about what the, the story is with you, your group and this little girl that has joined them in the cart. Out of the blue, just dropped down like out of the sky. <laughs> and she was on fire for like a moment and now it's kind of going out. <laughs> is she in the middle seat or the front seat? Front seat. Okay. Cool. All right, so we pile in. You pile in. Uh, who's sitting next to her again? Is it Sophia. Sophia. Uh, you sit down next to her. She looks over you with this this sort of big, rotting toothed grin. Well, hello, Sal Pig. Hello. Nice to meet you in person. Oh, thank you. I want to like get a good look at her. Like you described it as a pig's mask before, but it's like, is this actually her face? It doesn't seem to be her face. It actually seems to be a mask. And uh, you caught a glimpse of her before. Like her skin is very gray. Like you weren't certain if there was some sort of, some sort of like face paints or or some weird magical effect when you first encountered her, you know, years ago. Because they have these sort of things like in, in the carnival, they have some magical face paints that some kids, you know, get access to. And they end up walking around looking like fairies or fawns or all sorts of strange creatures. Um, so... That sort of allows her to to wander around with the rest of the group, not looking maybe maybe a little bit disturbing, but not so much that uh, that she stands out as you know uh, un- so unusual that people really take notice. But now that you're this close, uh, Sylphira, especially in the front row, you can see that like her skin is like gray and her nails are kind of rotting. She looks like a corpse to you, with a sort of a ratty tunic and this pig mask on her face. That's kind of a little bit off center. Like it doesn't fit perfectly well. Does does she smell like a corpse? Do you smell it? Yeah. You do smell something that smells a little bit like rot. Did you take my stone? What stone? Out of stone. the, The... Eight years ago, it was behind a cart. You were there. I was there. And then after that, I didn't have my stone. Did you take my stone? Eight years ago. I can't remember yesterday. I don't remember eight years ago. Do do you always travel around with the carnival? Oh, yes. It's my favorite place. They meet all all sorts of people. Do you know how to get out of the carnival? Like, into other places that aren't, like, outside this town? Like... Perhaps the Feywild or some other other place. Uh, she giggles at that, but doesn't answer you. And then with that, there's a chuchunk as the minecart begins to move forward. And she starts bouncing again in her seat. So this is my favorite ride. My favorite one of all. It is, What's this it one is again? A- <laughs> the mystery mine. I Has look back else? at Tana and then I look at Sam. And I go, it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> it's good. I like fun. It's yes. different. It's different. Um, it'll, it'll make you think, <laughs> and then and then feel. Uh, why is this well, your I, favorite ride, Sal Pig? Because it's scary and funny at the same time. 
Hmm. Hey. Does Granny, does your Granny, is she here at the carnival? Oh, no. No, no, my no. Granny's elsewhere. She stays home, but she lets me go to the carnival whenever I want and eat as much candy as I want. She smiles and her teeth again are like this rotting mess. When you go back to your granny, though, in Thither, uh, you uh, you have a way to get back to your granny, right? And where is that? No, oh, I can't tell you that. Just well, no. bouncing up and down in the seat. But we're uh, friends. We're going on a ride together. You can tell us anything. Oh, well, wait, here's the best part of the ride. As you guys enter through the mouth of this dragon sculpture uh, and uh, find yourself in this weird, different world. So, so Fear and Tana, both of you have been on this ride before. It was not the best experience for either of you. Uh, Sam, you haven't been on it with this, you know, this, this, uh, uh, s- since you came back to the carnival. Uh, and you have vague memories of it. Um, and you get this weird sort of like, uh, um, this this feeling of trepidation like like you didn't want to ride this ride you don't like this ride not very much uh what is something that uh for sam what is what is sam's greatest fear and you can send that to me in a uh a little chat if you wish no don't do it sam (laughs) no save yourself (laughs) While he's doing that, uh, what's how is this mask tied on this little girl? Is it just like a um, let's see. Let me take a quick look. I think that it is it's tied around her head with like a uh, some sort of like a leather strip and tied behind the back. Okay, no reason. Thank you. <laughs> uh, all right. You head inside on the ride. Uh, you end up in this strange world. The, the sky is like got that this strange hues, like the aurora borealis above you. There is rolling hills and trees uh, in the distance, and this minecart just makes its way down this path. Um, you, uh, uh, Sophia and Tana, both of you have been on this before. You've you've faced your fears before as well, uh, and. As you go through, you see them again, and and they don't affect you in the same way that they did before. Like, you know what to expect, and it replays those moments for you. Uh, Maybe it brings back, like, some of those memories and that feeling, but it doesn't have the same sort of power that it did the first time around. Uh, And uh, at at one point, you end up, uh, you know, you go through a couple of other scenes that you suspect are tied to the two, to the couple in the back, uh, and one of those scenes is um, uh, a scene of um, being left alone. Like you see at one point, this person kind of like suddenly off the side of the tracks as the cart moves on. Uh, and you get this weird feeling of loneliness as the person's trying to catch up to it. Uh, let's get uh, real quick. Uh, let's do wisdom saves for uh, all three of you. And these are just for experiencing the other, uh, uh, you know, emotions uh, these two other ones. So I need two, actually, two wisdom saves. So roll for feelings. Yes, roll for feelings. I'm feeling Once very more sorry, feelings. not sorry, right now that I didn't <laughs> join you on this ride. <laughs> <laughs> you still have another ticket you can punch, I think. <laughs> yeah, I'm good. <laughs> I'm having a blast with these kids. Uh, and you are with that natural twenty, like you started up the uh, the chase again, and you're you're running around the bottom part of the carnival. Uh, and uh, at one point, it begins to merge with the uh, the game of tag that's playing in the in the center and northern part as well. Uh, and uh, Thorn is is very successful in his little side mission to raise joy. Uh, yes, and maybe for a moment uh, you forget that your friends. Uh, are uh, tracking down a mysterious child that may have stolen something from Sam Ryan in the past and may have uh, motives that uh, that might not be altruistic or good. In fact, you're pretty sure they aren't. This is a, a thief that works for a hag. Nothing good can, from, can come from this. Uh, yeah. What were these saves that we had for Sam, Sophia, and Tana? How'd you guys do? 
I got one. an 11 and a 5. All right. Uh, one of these bothers you a little bit. Uh, the other one you end up laughing at. What about Sophia? I got a 9 for the first one and a 22 for the second. Same thing, almost in reverse. Like the one that uh, that bothers Tan and makes Sophia laugh. And then the next one that she's laughing at makes Sophia uncomfortable. Uh, Sam, what about those two for you? Well, one of them was a three. All right. And the other one was a 12 with the help of guidance. Okay. Uh, you have a similar experience, I think, to Sylphira, then. You are, you're bothered by this first scene that you come across, and that's this guy being left behind. Maybe that hits home to you in some way. Uh, the second one, we'll say, is probably like a fear of spiders, like spiders come out of, out of the, uh, the, the woodwork of this old uh, abandoned mine shaft that the, the cart goes through. Uh, some of you are affected by that, uh, others are not. Let's see how the two in the back are handling these. Uh, the two in the back are doing worse than, than you. They are not happy about these uh, experiences. Meanwhile, the entire time, uh, uh, Saupig is just kind of smiling and giggling like this is the funniest thing she's ever seen. Um, you uh, eventually come out of this, uh, after seeing a couple of these scenes of the ones that Sophira and Tana, uh, you know, it sort of played out before and the two for the... the the other carnival goes behind her. You end up coming out of this uh, this mine shaft, and you know the spiders are left behind, and you come into uh, a forest, uh, and the cart moves through the forest, and you see uh, off in the trees uh, something tracking the cart, something big and dark uh, and hard to make out, and it seems to be stalking you. Uh, Every time you get, like you think you're going to get a good look at it, it stops and vanishes into the forest, and then it'll appear on the other side. Uh, and eventually, the cart just grinds to a stop. It hits something off in the uh, in the, the, the tracks, and something happens. It causes it to stop, uh, and this this thing begins sort of getting closer and closer. Sam, give me a another wisdom save, but roll with disadvantage. Dirty 20. Nat 20. All right. Nice. Wow. Uh, so this thing gets closer and closer. Well, and also wisdom saves from a Sophia and 10 as well. Because this affects everyone. Fourteen. 10 and 14. All right. So Sophia, you're you're bothered by this. Like this is uh, something about this is is getting to you, but Tana, you just think that it's funny. It's obvious this is just a bad illusion meant to frighten someone in the uh, in the cart. You glance over at Sam, and for a moment, Sam is kind of looking at this thing a little warily. And then, Sam, you realize the same thing. This is just a silly illusion. Something's just screwing with you. In fact, this is just, it's hilarious how, how sort of, uh, you know, a bad, uh, you know, horror film sort of like set up this is like you've told terrible stories like around, you know, the campfires before, you know, with uh, sort of like the, the torch light under your faces. Uh, and this is like a bad version of that. And you realize that it's ridiculous and you end up laughing it off. Uh, and you look over next to you and Sow Pig is laughing right along with you. I just like point at her and then point at the thing. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah. Whew. All right, can we start this thing again, please? <laughs> and, and, yeah, go ahead. Damn. This sounds familiar. Did Tana and I see this type thing when we rewrote it before? No, you saw something okay. a little bit different. Okay. Uh, this this was, I think there was something similar um, from someone else in the cart, but this is, and, and a lot of the themes are similar too, like being trapped or being, uh, you know, afraid of spiders or fire or something like that. Uh, a lot of the themes kind of repeat themselves. And now that okay. you've gone through this once, they don't bother you as much uh, okay. because you realize it's kind of programmed in a way. Gotcha. Uh, the uh, the cart begins moving again, uh, and uh, you see the light of the opening at the end of the ride approaching. What do you do? So, um, Sow Pig, um, Will you help us? No. Why not? Well, yeah, why not? 
Because I can't. All right. Do you know someone who can? Because you're helpless. <laughs> well, that's just rude. Well, it's true. No, it's not true. We're, we're not helpless. We're, we're quite capable. Just like this. And uh, I take her mask off and I say, if you want it back, you're going to answer some questions, little lady. <laughs> Roll uh, an athletics check. Uh, and let's see uh, if you're able to snatch it from her before she can pull away. Ooh, she's quick. It's going to be, I believe, uh, a DC 19. Oh, it was 19 exactly. Yes. <laughs> Oh uh, all God, right. Finally, I roll okay. You reach forward and you rip the mask off, and you see uh, beneath it this uh, this face that is pretty terrifying to you. It's it's you know her eyes are like sunken uh, in sort of white, like she looks sort of like a corpse under it. And she pulls her face away and covers it with her hands. Uh, says, no, no, give me that back. Give it back now. Uh. Tana looks like she's regretting this decision of hers now. And she kind of has like a look like she feels bad about it, but she's going to grip onto it and look down at her and say, I'll give it back if you just tell me how you get home, how you get to Thither, how you, we have, your, your people have things that we need to get back. I can't tell you. They'll turn me inside out if I do. It'll be much Looks like worse. you're halfway there already. Yeah. Give me uh, an intimidate check. Meanwhile, the two people in the back of this cart just can't wait to get off this thing. <laughs> <There's four innocents>. <laughs> <laughs> like, this is the worst Uber for them ever. Yeah, they're like they're like clinging to each other in the back of the cart. Like, uh. I'm gonna turn around and just be like, "Candy, anyone?" Candy? <laughs> well, my. St- <laughs> My very short streak of good luck uh, is now a two. A two. Uh, all right. So she doesn't seem to be, uh, it seems very difficult to force her to do things. Right now, uh, the only thing that seems to be bothering is the fact that she doesn't have her mask and she doesn't want her face to be seen without it. Uh, and she's kind of covering it and kind of looking at you, you know, through like the, the her fingers, like, but trying to cover her face. Look, if you can't tell us who or where the entrance is, whatever. Can you tell us who can help us? No one can help you. You keep saying that and I don't believe you. But it's true. There's a way through. Your of proof course of there is. Of course there is. So who can tell us where that is? Granny could, but she's not here. She hasn't given me permission to. Please, please give me my mask back. Please. I look to Samarand and Sylphira. Like, should I should I give it back to her? I guess. I give it back to her. All right. She grabs it greedily and kind of shoves it back on her face and, and reties it in place. She seems a little bit uh less uh less pleased with this situation than she was before uh a bit cowed why did you come play with us i thought it would be fun i see when you give the the mask back to her give me uh give me a persuasion check whoever's got that and roll it with uh advantage you said whoever's proficient in persuasion whoever's got the best roll I have plus six, which I think that's probably the best, which will make that a 24. All right. Uh, You, uh, you realize that, uh, that she, once you've given it back, there's this, another change that kind of comes over her. Um, And she uh, uh, kind of looks your, your direction, kind of meets your gaze with her milky white eyes. uh, And she says, there is a way. There is a way to the Feywild from here to Prismia, but only the owners can take you. The way that I go is not accessible to you. The, the owners to are Mr. Witch and Mr. Light. Carnival. Yes. Oh, In- sorry, Sam. 
It is in the hall, the hall of mirrors, the hall of illusions. That is the way. But unless you know the trick, you will not be able to pass through. Was that where we saw you before? Where you were talking to that halfling man? Yes. What did you want with him? I wanted to take him to Granny. Why? Because, because he looked like he was in need, and I wanted to help him. Why do you take things to your granny? Because she asks me to, to remember all those that come through the carnival. Mm. Those that would skirt the rules. There must be a payment. I mean, that sounds like me, 10 out of 10, to be quite honest. Skirting the rules, uh, I have a need. Um, what else you got? If I took something from you, I am sorry. But you don't Granny, remember if you did or not. Oh, I steal from so many. I'm so good at it. Years and years. Every night there are some. But if, if you think that I took something from you, then Granny would have it. And you would have to see Granny to get it back. So once again, we need to talk to Mr. Rich and Mr. Light. Super. Okay. Well, I guess you've done all for us that you can. Sorry Be about um, everything. Mm -hmm. the cart comes to a stop and you're unloading uh, and she uh, slides out the side oh go ahead I want to pick her pocket <laughs> roll <laughs> steal from the thief <laughs> 17 plus 7 is a 24 alright oh, thank god somebody's rolling well <laughs> uh, roll uh, one second roll percentile for me real quick mm -hmm. Sixty-two. <laughs> uh, you end up grabbing something from like one of her pockets as she's slipping out of the cart, uh, and uh, you look down in your hand and you find that it's a, a monocle, sort of like a, a gentleman's monocle, made of some sort of green glass. It's on a little bit of a chain. She doesn't seem to have noticed that you took it. Hmm. All right. When she hops out of the cart, she turns back to your group uh, and the smile returns. And then she reaches forward and she touches Sam and says, Tag! And then she runs off towards the exit. <laughs> well, both of you. I believe I'm it. <laughs> I feel so bad for her. Me too. They're, they're prisoners to this coven. We have to do something about that. Though I do... Sam, you saw her walking backwards in the mirror, right? I have a thought. I have a thought, but we'll need to try it. But she said if we didn't know the way, there's almost no way we could go through. Well, she said there was a trick. I'm, I, I'm just wondering if we can find that spot. This might be crazy, but I don't know how fey magic works. What if we walked backward into the mirror? Oh. Is that crazy? That sounds crazy. No, I mean, it's worth a try. And, okay. you know, we still have lots of punches left in our tickets. So we got to find Thorn. I, I saw him chasing some like little cuties around, but uh, you probably want to join us if we're going to a Feywild. Like, what if we get it right and then we're just gone? Please get me. <laughs> <laughs> um, you said it was three in the morning ish. It's a little bit later now. It's uh, by the time you're done with this, uh, it is 
Let's see. You have about 45 minutes left or so before the crowning of the Witchlight uh, Monarch for the final ceremony. Well, last time we were in the Hall of Mirrors, it didn't take that long. We could at least give it a shot, and if it doesn't work, no harm, no foul. Okay. I'm assuming that Thorn is sort of lurking about the uh, the southern part, not too far from the mine. I think he's totally wrapped up with the kids at this point, just <laughs> uh, assuming they'll find him once they're done. In fact, I had an idea if the tag game ever starts running out of steam. Mm -hmm. What's your idea? Well, as some of the kids start getting tired and maybe congregating in one place, I'd like to sit with them and sort of pant and breathe for a bit and then start telling a story. Okay. And what story do you want to tell them? Oh, that's oh yeah, story time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you want me to actually tell you a story? <laughs> um... <laughs> Sorry, good I start. Not, I love it. Did, did not this upon that yourself. Go and... on with them for five more minutes and come back. To <laughs> An action. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, I'll give you a couple more minutes. It will bind you some time. So uh, let's go back to the group as you're trying to track down Thorn. Uh, you come out of the mystery mine. You don't see him initially in the area. The last you saw is that. Uh, <laughs> Danny, you think he was continuing the game of tag? Maybe. Either that or he had uh, encountered a very uh, terrifying child that was chasing him through the carnival. <laughs> um, well, shall we do the Hall of Mirrors then? Let's yeah. Give it a shot. Okay. If we see Thorn on the way, we can pull him in. Just nobody, if this is the case, if you go through, you come right back. Don't get trapped in a mirror. Okay. Well, we'll see what happens. And Sam, you're not allowed to go first. No, I, I'll go first. Thank you. Fine. If I have to go through this again, I swear to God, Sam. Okay. All right. Let's do it. All right. Uh, you take a few moments to try to hunt down Thorn to make sure that you're not getting in over your heads without uh, the last of your group. Um, give me a perception check. Let's just see how long it takes to uh, to track him down. Ooh, 22. Did you say 22? So fair. 15. And 10? All right. Uh, it's probably because you're short. <laughs> uh, hey. <laughs> uh sam you uh you glance across the way kind of the back the back the direction you came and you see that little that little picnic area just across from the mystery mine and you see the top of thorn's head uh as he's sitting amongst some trees the circle of kids uh are kind of sitting around him some parents uh nearby taking you know sort of a load off uh while uh this your friend is entertaining them there he is should we go get him? Let's let's let him finish his story. <laughs> so as you come so, up, I'm clearly already into a story. And um <clears throat> he's like partway through. He's saying, and the skeleton was right there. And, ah! like, <laughs> and so the man turned and he ran as fast as he could. Oh no. And he ran and he ran and he ran and he got into his house. And he jumped inside the house and he closed the door and he panted and he was so worried. And he caught his breath and after a second he peeked open the door and the skeleton was right there. And he slammed ah! closed the door and he ran into his bedroom and he jumped over the covers and he pulled the covers over his head. And he huddled there, shaking. Get a sword and stab him! And then he pulled the covers back. And the skeleton was right there. And, and the kids continue screaming. <laughs> shaking. And he realized the, the skeleton was shivering. And suddenly he wasn't scared anymore. And he said, 
Are you cold? And the skeleton, which was just shivering all its bones and clacking away, nodded its head. And so he pulled back the covers and he said, Well, why don't you get in? I'll warm you up. And so the skeleton climbed right into bed with him. No, I'm going to eat you! Don't let him do that! Pulled up the covers. Well, you see, he saw something in that skeleton. He realized it was only scary because he was scared of it. Once he tried to empathize with it, he understood. And as he held that skeleton and gave it all the warmth he could, he felt it getting softer and softer. And next thing you know, he started to empathize with it so much, he started to feel how sad it was. So sad that he started crying. And when his tears fell on the skeleton, that's when the magic happened. And he felt warm breath on his skin and a heartbeat against his chest. And he pulled back the covers and there was a beautiful woman in the bed with him. It was his wife who'd been lost for 20 years. No. And that's why, children, you should always try to understand other people. They might not be as scary as you think. Yeah. Yeah, the kids take this, they like this story. Uh, there was like ups and downs. And at the end, uh, some of their parents are like, the, you know, kind of clapping in the back and the kids kind of look around like they realize the story's over. It's probably not one that they're used to. Uh, but you get a few, they're like, yeah, yeah, that's great. And one of them's like, probably should have just smashed that skeleton though. <laughs> now the kids next to him just like hits him like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> uh, and uh, with that story being told, we'll pull away from this scene uh, and uh, kind of see this overview of the carnival. We'll kind of zoom in a little bit on the Hall of Illusions, which awaits you next. And we'll take a five-minute break right here, and when we come back, we'll deal with that. All right. And now, ladies and gentlemen, a word from our sponsor. <laughs> Hello, friends. Do you often find that your plot lines necessitate leaving the city in a hurry? Have yeah. you not amassed enough wealth from adventuring, gambling, and or blatant thievery that you can afford to own and stable your own multiple mounts? Well then, head on down to Delusional Mike's Discount Mounts. We got horses, mules, camels, goats, dogs, frogs, chocobo, a Honda Odyssey, and more. <laughs> Heck, I'll even sell you my wife. But good luck with that. She hasn't allowed anyone to mount her in years. Looking for a mount to fit your personal aesthetic? We can die. Uh, pay, uh, find a mount that will suit your particular needs. Looking for a custom build? I'm also a licensed termodaxist and necromancer. So, I personally guarantee that your mount will make it off the lot or we will fully refund your convenience fee. So come on down to Delusional Mike's discount mounts today and let us see what Delusional Mike can help you mount. Use the code phrase, the spader's a jerk, to get 10% off your next mount purchase. Limit one for customer. Delusional Mike's discount mounts, where the mount you get is the amount you can afford. This message is brought to you by VectorCorp. VectorCorp is not a subsidiary of Neuraltech. That was the best one yet. Oh, my <laughs> oh, God. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm dying. I'm dying. <laughs> Is that based off of Crazy Gideon's? It feels like it was a very Crazy Gideon's type of uh, advertisement. I've built a lot of things <laughs> into that. I'm not sure if you would know Crazy. Crazy Gideon's was in L.A. <laughs> oh, no. Never heard of it. Sold, All right. Sold, I think he sold furniture or something. It was a lot like that. And his name was Crazy Gideon. <laughs> oh, my God. I love it. Wow. <laughs> All right. Well, with that, right. let's take five. Yeah. All right. We'll be you right back. Five. <laughs> All right, welcome back, everyone. Um, we are live once again. Uh, I hope 
you're here. I hope you're enjoying the show so far. I also wanted to mention before we continue that tomorrow night we are doing a Between the Sheets session with Tana and Thorn. And uh, we're going to talk about our characters, talk about the game so far. And uh, Callie might be persuaded to do a little bit of art. Um, while we're also, I, I don't think we can use d between the sheets. I think that's copyrighted. We'll have to come up with a different name for that. Yeah. You mean that's not, <laughs> that's not neutral? That's not a generic term? All right. No, there's, there's a little you know, there's a little D&D podcast that used that before we did. So uh, just, a little, just a little one. A little one. Nobody... little tiny one called Critical Role. It's fine. It's... Well, you know, it's a between the sheets right? style sort of thing. Well, there you we'll go. find our own. Um, we're not going to call it that, but it's in that style. In and that also, band, if if it's just you know <laughs> you and me as husband and wife, that takes on like a really weird, like the double entendre is too hard. <laughs> oh, uh, it's too, too hard too much. of a Hello, double entendre. Nerd. <laughs> like, oh. uh. Yeah, that's a very different stream. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, it is. All right, so we'll avoid that terminology. Um, anyway, join us tomorrow night from 8 to 9. We'll be chatting game, chatting characters, chatting behind the scenes, uh, and doing some art. We'll see you there. All right. Uh, are we ready to move on, move forward? When uh, last we, uh, we took this break, uh, we are just wrapping up a story, and we know that... Uh, those uh, the onlookers, Safira, Sam, and Tana, uh, have this plan to go to the Hall of Illusions uh, and take Thorn with them to see if, uh, through experimentation, they might be able to find a way to uh, they might find the trick to use the Hall to get to the Feywild. Sounds exciting. So, who wants to explain this to Thorn? Well. Hi guys, did you like the story? It was great. Oh, it was man. a beautiful story, Thorn. Such a wonderful message too. I didn't know that was a thing you picked up. I mean, I guess I've been gone for a while, but yeah, really, yeah. really good. Remember how I also you always used to ask our moms to to tell me stories at night? Yeah. Well, that that wasn't really an option, so I kind of just picked it up myself. Well done. That's wonderful. What did did you find her? Yeah, yeah, we we found her. Um, yeah. Sophia, you want to feel this one? He, he seemed to be trapped or cursed of some kind. She's being used by Granny Nightshade um, to collect things for her, but Sow Pig doesn't seem to know. What for? Uh, we weren't able to glean much information from our conversation with her, but one important thing that we learned is that the gateway to the Feywild is in the Hall of Illusions. So oh. my thought, my thought, and this might not work, if we go into the Hall of Illusions to the spot where Sam saw her, we saw her walking backwards through the mirror. My thought is if we go there, turn our backs to the mirror and step backwards, that we might step through the doorway and into the Feywild. Thorn scratches, Apparently there's some trick to it. Thorn scratches his head and then says, I'll let you try it first. If I well, do that, of course. I might break a mirror. I wouldn't let anyone else try this first. It's far too dangerous. I mean, maybe we should all hold hands or something, just in case, you know, oh, something yeah. weird does happen. That's a good idea. Good we'll idea. go together. Okay. Let's do it. <clears throat> right. You head over to the Hall of Illusions. Uh, you've been here now a couple times. You know to avoid the... Uh, uh, the cabinet with uh, Tasha's uh, hideous uh, laughing mannequin. And uh, you find uh, at the uh, entrance, uh, Candlefoot. 
has resumed his post. Uh, and as, as people are kind of coming through, he's kind of dancing about and kind of gesturing inside. And uh, he's much more animated than he was before. In fact, when he sees you, he kind of skips up uh, and makes like a couple like little heart shapes with his hands and big like smiley faces and and uh, ends up sort of. I open my arms for group. a hug, and he leaps forward and gives you a big hug. <laughs> I give him like a little twirl. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, after that, he steps back. He looks uh, over at uh, Thorn and he goes to give like a big hug, but ends up like stuck in midair, like one foot like on his tiptoe it almost looks like he's like clinging to thorn but uh, he's also like about a foot away he's, he's like miming the the act of sort of climbing on thorn and thorn. then he does this thing where he's trying to pull thorn and get thorn to move and of course thorn doesn't go anywhere and he's not actually even touching thorn <laughs> thorn is very puzzled by this <laughs> he's trying to help but he just gets more, more lost <laughs> he ends up sort of like uh every time you kind of go to help him or, or like you know give him a hand or whatnot he slips around you and and is is just uh kind of lithe on his feet and just sort of fooling around with uh the whole situation candlefoot my friend would would you perhaps allow us to go in to the hall um, just just really quickly. He uh, mimes reaching into his coat and he pulls out like his hand as if uh, pulling out a ticket. Yes. Well, hand him my ticket. All right. All of you pull out tickets. He punches them, hands them back, and then with a, a flourish gestures to the door. Thorn suddenly gets all the miming that he was doing and now starts laughing. <laughs> <laughs> all right uh and uh as you are you know looking at the entrance uh can uh, candlefoot kind of moves towards it and pretends like he's pulling on a rope as you guys move closer and then as you get to the door he flips around to the other side pretends he's got a broom because he's brooming you inside <laughs> i just keep giggling no and clawing. put my hand up for a high five he gives you an air five from about 10 feet away. And then he grabs his hand and he's like, oh. and you do the finger I guns. I love and he him. Can we adopt Candlefoot? <laughs> he falls over dead <laughs> when you do the finger guns, holding his chest like you just shot him. Oh, man. And he mimes being dead until you guys walk inside. Really into his job. Uh, inside the Hall of Illusions, you find the mirrors that uh, were here before. It doesn't seem like anything has changed. Uh, what do you do? Uh, you know that there are sort of like different areas and different sections of this. It's a bit of a maze. Uh, and, you know, the, the reflections can kind of throw you off a bit. Although the trick to knowing sort of where you are in how, like how far you've gone is uh, the age of the reflection that is, you know, reflected back at you. Where do you want to go in this uh, place? Do you just try like the first one and or are you doing something else so well do you think you can take us back to where you found sow pig before yeah i think so um it was near the end so if we find that one mirror where it shows us all old um it should be somewhere around there all right roll uh, an investigation check this die this die 21 21 you find your way to the back pretty easily uh this this place now you've been here a couple times it feels pretty familiar also some memories of like the past of having gone through this place replaced a few mirrors uh you know at some point when you worked here you have like these weird kind of memories of of sort of managing the place between you know festivals uh and you find uh this sort of back this back area right near the end and you realize well maybe you should have just come in through the back door you would have gotten here a lot quicker but you're here now and there are uh, a series of mirrors. And the one that you saw Sow Pig in is a little bit different than the rest of the ones you've been passing. Uh, the rest of the ones uh, are all kind of squarish for the most part. Not really squarish, more like rectangular, you know, but different sizes and shapes. This one is circular. Uh, and it has a different sort of like filigree around the uh, uh, the, um, the the mirror itself. Like it's it's sort of like bit of a verdigris, sort of like a copperish with green uh, in, in design like vines with leaves. Uh, you're fairly certain this is the one that you saw Sow Pig in. Well, 
I will walk up to the mirror. Hold hands. I will touch it. Well, I will touch it with my gloved hand while facing the mirror first. Okay. Nothing happens when you do so. It feels like a solid mirror. Okay. I'm going to turn around. Well. And I hold out my hand. I just Anna, I'm I'm sorry. I don't think you'd be very much of a, a good anchor. Thorn? I will engulf her entire hand in one of mine. And then right. reach the other out to hold on to our other friends. <laughs> okay. And I'm going to close my eyes. So Luna, protect me. And I'm going to step backwards. Boom. You hit the solid mirror. It shakes, almost like falls over. You have to kind of turn and sort of stabilize it as it's like all over the place. Uh, that did not work. You kind of sort of almost tripped over it a little bit. Hmm. I would Shoot. like to examine the guilt work. Okay. There are vines, and uh, you see some thorns in there as well. Uh, lilies on it uh, in some shapes of leaves and flowers that you don't recognize. Mm, touch one of those unrecognizable flowers. It feels normal. Just feels like uh, this sort of like copperish metal or bronzish metal, bronzish sort of metal. Feels no. old. Like it's uh, corroding slowly. It also feels a little wet to you almost. Like uh, there's some humidity around this. Hmm. What do our reflections look like in this mirror? In this mirror, you look, uh, you actually look normal in this mirror. Oh, this is the one right in the middle? No, it's actually near the end, but it's off kind of like in its own little like corridor. Like, uh, hmm. This is one of the ones where you you could easily pass it by because you can kind of see the exit from where the turnoff is to go to this mirror. So it doesn't seem like this is one that is visited very often. Is that you said there, this mirror is a little different from the others? Is that the is that what's different, or is it different in other ways also? It's different in that it's oval as opposed to like rectangular, and the uh, designs around the edge are are nicer. It just it just is different. It's like kind of obviously different too. It's also kind of set a little bit further away from the mirrors nearby. May I try something? Well, of course. Wait, did you say there was like, you could sense moisture around it? Yeah, like when you rub your your finger on the, the side, you bring it away and there's like a little bit of like, it's almost like dew or something that's on your finger. It feels like that, you know, like dew on, on like your car in the morning. Okay. But this, the rest of the mirrors don't have that around here. Although it is getting kind of close to morning. But uh, looking around the rest of the tent, this one uh, seems set aside because of that. All right. I'm going to first say, Nightshade, Nightshade, let us in and let our fey adventure begin. And then I'm going to huff on the glass your breath mists upon it but nothing okay. seems to change other than that then i will gently reach out and and, touch where it... and you bonk it sam sam turn what? turn witter shins three times right witter shins uh i will turn clockways three mm -hmm. times and touch the mirror again no difference so just listen feel here solid. You and I look at the mirror. We know, we know you're the secret. Now, do you want me to break you? I'll take the seven years of bad luck. I've had eight years of bad luck. You don't test me. Let me in. <laughs> you're banging on it. If a mirror could sort of step back in, uh, you know, in, in a little bit of shame, it might. But this one does not. <laughs> well, son of a gun, it was worth a try. All right. <clears throat> How about this one? And I'll look my reflected self right in the eyes and say, Fred. 
<laughs> uh, a lawyer appears and probably sues you. <laughs> Was I supposed to say melon? <laughs> that doesn't work. Does not work. You uh, you try a few different random words. I'm assuming, uh, and you're here for uh, a while. Uh, any other sort of uh, harebrained ideas that you've got? How much time do you want to spend here doing this? Uh, you've probably got about mm, 20 minutes or so before uh, the Witchlight Monarch ceremony. After yelling at it doesn't work, Tana's already lost interest. Uh. <laughs> so while they're doing it's an ear all, mirror. While they're all trying these different things, can I just look like l- look really deeply into the mirror and try to make sure everything that I see in the mirror lines up with what's not in the mirror? Like, Just look for anything mm. unusual deep in the mirror. You don't see anything unusual. Uh, go ahead and roll a perception check, though, just for fun. <laughs> uh, well, I got a three on the die, so that's going to be a, a three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you don't notice anything unusual. You kind of like stick your face in it. You look in all directions. You look behind it. You don't Ooh, see anything uh, in the reflection. That Yeah. You don't see anything in the reflection that seems. Maybe you see a couple things, but like the rest of your group is like, no, that that's normal. Like, is that a shadow over there? And Sam's like, that that's my shadow. Oh, it's I a normal see shadow. You, Sam, I see you. Yeah, I'm I'm standing right here, Thorn. But I see you in the. There's two of you. That's how mirrors work, Thorn. Yeah, good. <laughs> well spotted. All right. Um, how about this? Um. <laughs> I want to wipe some of the dew off of the mirror and then like wipe it around the flowers and the gilt work. Okay. Still no change. Well. Yeah, I got nothing. I guess we're going to either have to win this contest at the end of the night or steal some stuff. And I don't know. I vote stealing, but we don't have to do that. Maybe we'll win. I don't know, Thorn. You've been telling good stories and taking all the children, and I don't know. Yeah, let's 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 try and win this thing tonight. And if th- that doesn't work, we can always come back tomorrow. Yeah. Well, Safira, you won that contest. I'm trying to think what else we could do to possibly be crowned. I don't know. We gave Candlefoot his voice back. Thorn won. <clears throat> well, no, that was a while ago. I did win an eating contest. We started a huge game of tag. We had a candy rave. We repaired the merry-go-round. Oh, that's true. We did repair the merry-go-round. I wonder if those unicorn statues get a vote. I don't know how this is calculated. I wonder if they know how to get to the Feywild. We didn't ask them. I'm did pretty sure somebody? we did. Well, there was stuff they couldn't tell us either. Diana made that pretty clear. Right. Well, that's true. Well, they made that pretty clear. They also made that pretty clear. I'm guessing how to get to the Feywild is one of those things that it's kind of like, mm, nope. That would make sense. Is there anything um, behind this mirror? Can we look behind it? Yeah, you look behind it and you can see like the tent, the, like the tent wall is about five feet or so behind it. What about on the back of the mirror? You've already checked the back. It's just oh. like a wooden back. All right. uh, I'm assuming that you've probably like fiddled with it for a while. Uh, Does you it find anything else? Swivel? No, it's it's on like sort of a stand where it can kind of swivel like at an angle, sort of like a beauty mirror or whatnot. But uh, yeah, like you could flip it up all the way to the other side if you wanted to. When no one's looking, Tana licks it just to like cover all the bases. What was that what you're gonna do? I'm gonna lick it. Lick it. <laughs> uh, you lick it and uh, nothing happens. You just leave a little bit of lick mark on the mirror. Dusty. Uh, slightly embarrassed, though he did not see that. <laughs> Thorn like, just sort of looks around and leans in close and he's like, Mirror, mirror, take me near, take me far. Take us to Prismere. Hither, thither, and yon. <laughs> Nothing happens. <laughs> All right, I'm well, done with this mirror. We've tried everything. 
away. All right, you head back out to uh, the exit uh, of the Hall of Illusions. And when you come out the back, uh, you find uh, Kettle Steam kind of waiting in the trees nearby. Uh, the last time you'd seen her was in this this area, and you kind of left her to kind of like rest and uh, in with the idea that you would meet back up there. It's now been a few hours. Uh, and as as you come out, she, she looks at you and kind of gestures, Hey, 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 uh, what are you doing? We're just uh, following some leads, you know, leads that we found. Um, what are you doing? I'm hiding here. I've been waiting for you to return. Right. Well, and we definitely were remembering to come contact you. <laughs> yeah, that's why we're here now. <laughs> roll, roll deception. <laughs> <laughs> Thorne's just like, I thought we came here because... Thorne. Thorne, what? Thorne. How how was tag, Thorn? Oh, it was great. <laughs> what a tenor roll. Nineteen, actually. Why 19. on this? <laughs> All right. So it's despite Thorn almost uh just you know kind of ruining your credibility, you, you sell it real quick and Sam gets Thorn to shut up and change the subject. And uh and Kettlesteam seems to buy it, doesn't seem to be offended that you <laughs> completely forgotten about them. <laughs> We didn't forget. We just, there was a lot we had to take care of. Anyway, um, have you learned anything? Well, I've, I've learned that this tree here is a good spot to hide behind. No one seems to come over here. But that's okay. about it. All right. Well, um, I guess we can give you the rundown of what we've learned. Um, there was... Um, what do we do since we saw you? There was the, uh, the the unicorns. We all gave them their names back, and they told us a bunch about the three witches and Hither and Yither and Bon, whatever those are called. And um, then uh, we chased the pig girl around for a while. Um, we had a big game of tag. We went through the um, Mines of Madness, and then um, we failed to break through a mirror. And now here we are. Uh, well, you sort of skipped over. It's like you're sort of burying the lead there, but you said something about hither, hither, yawn, and, and hags. And uh, is that is that what happened to Prismia? Something. What, what is wrong with Sibilna? Uh, Zabilna, I thought she rooted. She's not in charge anymore. I guess her kind of um, mean old sisters split up the entire kingdom into three kingdoms. Oh no! And locked Zabilna up. Oh no! no. I knew something was wrong. Yeah, and then we found out from uh, Sal Pig that um, there is an entrance uh, into the Feywild through the Hall of Illusions, which we were unable to um, decipher. I might have any insight on that? I, 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 none at all. And even if I did, I, I wouldn't be able to go through. Why not? Well, it's, it's part of the pact that I made with Sibilna. I think I told you this before, but uh, at least... The deal that I made meant that I couldn't just go to her doorstep whenever I felt like it, which means I can't go to Prismir. But if Sibilna is no longer in charge, does the pack still stand? I don't know. But well, if it does and I go, then I'm in big trouble. All right. High risk. Got it. Got it. Well... So far as we know, Mr. Witch, Mr. Light, they're the only ones that know how to get through. We know where the portal is, but we don't know what the secret is. We've tried everything short of licking it. Nobody licked it. Nope. nope. <laughs> Did you say nobody licked it? <laughs> nobody licked it. <laughs> Who licks that mirror? I'm going to look side long at Tana. <laughs> like, insight check. Yeah, same. At <laughs> one. There, yeah, we're back. Like, Thorn I got a natural too. There's <laughs> like a moment of silence. Where everybody kind of looks around, like, "Wait, is that true?" <laughs> Thorn is Nobody looking would worried, like thinking, "Did I lick it?" <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I was thinking about licking it, but who knows where that mirror has been? Probably get something really disgusting off of that. Like all those grubby little fingers touching it for all these years over time and space. Yeah, probably get something right nasty. And if we've seen Faye walk through that mirror, who knows what kind of residual magics might lie on it. Yeah, good thing nobody licked it, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah Sal Pig walked through there, and she's kind of a rotting corpse. You know, I mean, can yeah. I get some water? I'll be right back. <laughs> sweating a little bit. 
uh, all right. So do you, uh, do you explain the, the plan now? Like uh, before you talked to Kettle's team, there was a brief discussion that the plan was to, to earn the, uh, the Witchlight Monarch crown. Uh, and therefore sort of force this meeting with Mr. Witch and Light, Mr. Light. There's also this backup plan of trying to steal uh, their watch or the vein and force them to deal with you uh, sort of by those on those terms. Like, uh, you know, you will give it back unless they, they deal with you. Do you uh, present these to Kettlestein as like what you're planning on doing? I think just the first one, the, um, the Monarch plan. I don't think we need to tell her about trying to steal anything yet. I start to describe it. If you want to stop me, you can. <laughs> Anna, we are not stealing anything. Okay. You're right. That is wrong. And yes, it is. I'm sorry. Don't be sorry. You haven't stolen anything yet. No. Just is like you haven't licked anything. If you give it back though when you're done. Isn't that borrowing? That's a great territory. One must seek permission for it to be borrowing. Kettlestein says, do you, think, do you think that would work? That you could steal them and then do you think that they would bargain with you then? Well, from what we've heard, if we have one of those things, they will at least talk to us. And we are... Uh, we're hoping from there that, yeah, we can bargain with them. Here's the thing. People can't talk here. They're like under a spell or something. They just can't talk. So yeah, if you can have a way oh, of getting somebody I don't to think talk that to that is, uh, Kettlesteam says, I don't think that that's entirely true. I've heard them talk about it that one time when I overheard them. I yeah, just but think to that, each other, not to outsiders like us. Yeah. Perhaps. I mean, but. Well, maybe they're not under the spell, but everybody else is, and only Mr. Witch and Mr. Light can give us information. If that means winning this crown, then that's what we're going to do. Or are you um, suggesting that one of us try and eavesdrop on that conversation? Well, I think if you're planning to try to steal from them, I can help you with, with either that or maybe getting in uh, and, and, and listening to them. But uh, I don't know if I'll have the uh, the ability to help with both. My powers are still limited. Hmm. Well, Anna, I am pretty sneaky, if I do say it myself. You are, Sam. Okay. I might regret this. Tana, that cupcake. You should maybe give that to Sam now. Yeah. I mean, we could see who's crowned, and if we're not crowned... Then the cupcake. Then immediately cupcake. Yeah, if you get caught, then I think all the bets are off. Nothing would work. That's a good idea, Tana. We should wait. Yeah, I mean, if you have the way of doing it right, try it that way. The crowning is also happening very soon uh, by this time. Um, So even if you went to go sneak in and spy on them, they may be already, uh, you know, inside the big top getting ready for the crowning. They may not even be, you know, available to be spied on right now. Right. Yeah. So uh, we'll save those as plan. What are we on? F and G? <laughs> <laughs> uh, although the uh, the cupcake, you know, if you, that's the invisibility cupcake, right? That would give you a pretty big advantage if you need to get close to them at some point. Well, yeah, well, I, we'll we'll save that. Let's go get good seats. Yeah, let's. All right, you head to the big top. Kettle steam uh, changes shape. Uh, basically, looks it over at someone else that's kind of uh, over in the carnival and uh, disguises herself using magic. She becomes sort of like a, a sort of generic version of this other person. Not quite the same, but. Uh, based on someone that that she sees uh, and uh, ends up traveling, you know, coming with you into the big top, uh, just pretending to be, you know, another person in the crowd. I have got to learn how to do that. Well, you can make a deal with Sibilna if you can find her. She'll give you the power. Yeah. Yeah, I might. Look, uh, big top, everyone. 
All right. <laughs> you enter the, into the big top. You find some seats uh, again, and you wait for the uh, the crowning event to begin. It's not too far off, uh, and uh, and it's not long before the uh, the lights in the big top uh, dim again. Uh, the last time this happened at the uh, you know the big top extravaganza, that darkness was broken by Mister Light, you know, appearing. Uh, in in this sparkling outfit uh, above the crowd, this one begins with uh, a beautiful song that uh, breaks out in the darkness, and you recognize the view, the voice of Palasha the mermaid uh, as she's singing and sort of getting the crowd kind of you know uh, silencing the crowd and, and preparing the stage in a way. Uh, her song resonates amongst the tent, tapping into the emotions of all those in attendance. It's sort of like a, a song of. Um, it's a song of of, of like uh, joy, but also maybe a little bit of sorrow that like the uh, the the carnival is now coming to an end for the night. You know, it's you're near you're in the last hour of the event, um, and uh, after she's sort of set the stage and and uh, the crowd is calmed to the point where you, it's pretty quiet, uh, her voice uh, stops and there's a silence that is then broken a moment later by a deep voice somewhere in the darkness. Uh, and you hear it say, in the night, in the dark, there is a light. And you see a glimmer of red that shimmers in the void of this dimness above the, uh, uh, above the, the, the center of the tent. Um, it glows brighter, uh, illuminating the spinning top of Mr. Witch. Uh, Mr. Light's witch light vein, that scepter that he carries all the time. You see small beams of red light that are cast from the gems at its top, sweeping across the crowd, occasionally stopping to illuminate someone before passing, uh, before moving on to another. Uh, you hear that deep voice uh, again from the darkness. The time has come for the witch light carnival to choose its witch light monarch. In doing so, we celebrate the one person that has brought the most joy to the festivities. The lights glow brighter, and you can see now Mr. Uh, Witch uh, at the center of uh, the uh, the circle, the, the ring. And above him, dangling from a long streamer of silk, uh, is Mr. Light, spinning slowly, his veins spinning with him uh, with a large smile. And Mr. Light says... Round and round it goes. Only the witch light vein knows who will be the witch light monarch. And the light begins flashing kind of through the crowd, again, stopping you know, occasionally on somebody and then moving on. Sometimes almost like it's, it's toying with the crowd a little bit, like someone kind of like, you know, hits them and they brighten up and smile and it slowly moves on. And you feel like it's, it'll stop on this grumpy dude who kind of looks around like he's had been caught on the kiss cam at like, you know, some <laughs> baseball setting uh, as a joke. Uh, and, and then it moves on again and people kind of laugh a bit. Um, quick question for your group. Uh, if you guys had to choose amongst you, uh, the best option for the witch light monarch, who would it be? Thorn or Sam, probably. I feel like Sam is the obvious choice. Yeah, so if you're thinking Sam? Sam or Thorn. What about Sam? Oh, Sam is torn between like, yes, himself me. and <laughs> but, but like I started things and Thorn carried them through in a way I couldn't or didn't. Does Sam want to be the Witchlight Monarch? Yeah. Is there a sense of like uh, what does he feel? What are the feelings that you get when you think, like, if it was you, like, let's say that that light kind of streams across your group, kind of stopping for a moment on Tana, then on Thorn, then Sylphira, and then on Sam. What sort of feeling does Sam get when it closes in on him? Sam gets, oh, a plethora, sort of a nervous excitement, like, yes. I've worked really hard for this. And also a sense of entitlement, like they took something away from me. 
And this is the only way I can get it back. And sort of a dread, like, oh, I don't know if I have the stomach for this. <laughs> and also, what else will I lose? It hovers, on, it hovers on Sam for a moment, and then it drifts back to Thorn. It kind of stays there for a second. Uh, what sort of thoughts are going through Thorn's head? I, I see like the crowd nearby is kind of looking in your direction. It seems as if the uh, the movement of this beam is maybe settling on one or two people. Uh, I think his eyes go wide for a second, and he looks at Sam like like deer in the headlights. Like, I thought this was for you. And then he's kind of like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> all right so it's sort of shock and awe after. any any particular thoughts is this something that thorn wants or does he think that that it belongs to sam he wants one of the people in the group to get it i don't know that he necessarily wants it himself i think he was expecting that it, that sam would be the person so he will be taken aback if it's him not that that's a bad thing, but yeah, definitely he'll be, he'll probably think some sort of mistake was made. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, the light, it drifts off of Thorn for a moment back to Sam. It stays there just for a brief second. And then suddenly it sharply darts back to Thorn and begins glowing brighter and brighter. And uh, Mr. Light, who's dangling from this, this silk, kind of looks your direction with this this big smile uh, and ends up kind of coming to a stop and holding the light, the, the witch vein, the witch light uh, vein high. Uh, and he says, the carnival has spoken. You, sir, the big one in the crowd, step forth, come and claim your crown. Uh, 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 all right. Uh, are you sure? Meanwhile, just jump all you around sure? you, these all around you, like your, your your friends are cheering you on. And there's this huge sort of peanut gallery of children that just go like, yeah! <laughs> uh, and you recognize some of them from having like run around with the crowd earlier. All right, I'm encouraging them. I'm like, yeah, shout, children, shout, yes! Eventually I'll get with the program and kind of still nervously laughing, but also happy, stand up and kind of lift an arm to wave at everyone, look at the crowds, some of the kids that I bonded with be like i see you and, and walk down wherever <laughs> all I'm right supposed to go yeah the oscar music begins playing you know you only have about 30 seconds try not to you, on the way there yeah you make your way up to uh uh to the you know the ring uh and as you step across um you see mr witch is standing below mr light is still kind of above circling on this uh, this streamer. In fact, he's begun sort of kind of swinging around to get a little bit wider uh, in in, uh, in the ring. Um, Mr. Witch turns back to uh, behind him and you see that uh, that clown, Thacko, is nearby and he's got this, this box uh, and he steps forward with this grumpy look on his face and he hands it off to Mr. Witch and Mr. Witch turns to you and, and moves closer. And as he does, he opens this box uh, and inside you see a crown that appears to be made of golden butterflies. Look at Mr. Light, like, for me? Are you sure? This is for you. You have spread joy in the carnival like no one else. And there is a childlike wonder in your eyes. He pulls out this this crown of golden butterflies and he moves to place it on your head. And he's just tall enough to kind of reach all the way up. You only have to stoop a little bit. As and it, as it lights upon your head, you feel like uh you feel like a change kind of come over you. You're not sure what it is, uh, until you look back and you realize that the the wings that you've been wearing, like these kind of cheesy, you know, carnival wings that were handed out to you for free when you first got to the carnival, uh, are changing. They're becoming more brilliant. And in fact, they rise up on their own. Just these large butterfly wings, multicolored, now looking real, as like real, like you know, monarch butterfly butterfly wings. 
uh, and they begin sort of fluttering behind you, uh, and you feel your feet lift off the ground. <clears throat> I sort of give like a surprised laugh. He's just like totally awestruck by this. And Mr. Witch says to you in a voice that, that only you can hear as the rest of the crowd is going kind of wild with this. Uh, he says, from now on, the title of the Witchlight Monarch is yours. Stays with you when you leave the carnival. Remember it. You earned it. Oh, thanks. But, but... And with that, Falasha begins singing again. The acrobats come out. And there is uh, very quickly like a procession that is forming to celebrate Thorn as the Witchlight Monarch at the end of the night. And I think we're going to pull away at this point kind of out of the tent and out of the crowd as you see people kind of celebrating outside in the carnival and you see some fireworks going off above uh, at the uh, at the crowning that's happening from within. And this is where we will end for the night. Very cool. All right. I love it. Wow. <laughs> I really want to draw a thorn being crowned. Oh, I think you should. Awesome. I love you so much. <laughs> <laughs> so uh the uh the crown has like uh some extra sort of abilities that uh we'll talk about uh in the next game things will be will be something you discover uh as time goes on but for right now uh you are flying uh and cool. you have the ability to fly for who knows how long yeah, I'm super curious how long these wings are going to last, because that's awesome. <laughs> I imagine they're very huge wings to lift somebody like Thorn, too. They've, they've got to be. Whew. And as we're walking out, Samaran mutters under his breath, enjoy it while it lasts. <laughs> oh. Ooh, interesting, interesting. Woo! I don't think Thorne has any conception of <laughs> time <It's> been, barely. <laughs> it's an interesting take that Sam has. You know that this is a pretty big gift that's been handed out. And Sam, you remember things about it now. Now that you see it like in action, you know that like the, the Witchlight Monarch, whoever's crowned, that like it, it, when, for instance, the carnival returns to a place where there's been a monarch before. That person's recognized as like the monarch of previous, you know, visitations of the carnival. They have sort of like a, um, they're not considered like, you know, witchlight hands, but they are important and they, and they are given uh, a certain amount of respect by the, the witchlight hands and Mr. Witch and Mr. Light. Like they are almost royalty, like actual royalty. Okay. Very cool. Well, before we totally wrap up for the night, I wanted to also mention that we've got our one shot coming up later this month. So that's going to be over Thanksgiving weekend, I believe on Saturday of Thanksgiving weekend in the daytime. And uh, I don't know if any of you watching are familiar with Blades in the Dark, but we are going to be doing a one shot heist in a pseudo post apocalyptic gothic Victorian dark industrial punk city just stop stop those are my buzzwords <laughs> i know when you're not even free that weekend it's so sad <laughs> we'll have to do another one sometime um in the long run one of the goals is definitely to be doing one shots in other systems um sort of you know doing dnd &D and also doing some other things so I think it's just a lot of fun. There's a lot of wonderful systems out there and can't wait to get in and explore some of them. Yeah, I can't wait too. This uh, the, this one shot's going to be super fun. I've already got ideas. I've been doing a little bit of research, but I've been trying not to do too much. Oh, I've been reading through the book and it is, there are some really cool innovations that, that the yeah. system brings to the table. I'm I've heard say. about a couple of them. Uh, I ran a, a heist in D&D &D that I think used a couple rules that maybe were adapted mm. from it. I'm not entirely certain, but there's, yeah, there's mechanics in that game that are just, they change the way that you role play yeah. like a scenario uh, in, in ways that I've never seen in other games. Yeah. I'm looking I also, forward to it. I also think we should do fiasco at some point. Oh, yes. 
God, Fiasco is fun. <laughs> I've never played Fiasco. So what's Fiasco? Oh. <laughs> we got Save it. that for another time. Another <laughs> day. Another day we will explain Fiasco yeah. to you. <laughs> okay. Maybe we'll have to talk about that tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Well, thanks for coming, everyone. Bye, guys. <laughs> thanks, everybody. Like, Good night, everyone. Share, thanks subscribe. for coming. See Thank so you so much. For subscribe. Come back next okay. week. We'll see, and tomorrow. Share with your friends. Come back tomorrow. Rope other people into this. Come back tomorrow <laughs> and then also next week. Good right. night. Good night, everyone. Good night, everybody.